Hi, this is Dan Sullivan, and today I'm going to be going over restoring joint health. So I had a great question about that from Alice, and so I'll go into it. There's a couple of different things that you can do to try to restore your joint health. Uh, one of those is actually by walking barefoot. So I know ladies, we love those heels, but they really change the angle of the calf, of the knee, the hips. Um, so when you're wearing especially heels or um, shoes with a platform of some kind where your heel is elevated, that changes the mechanics, the biomechanics of your body. So I would recommend walking barefoot at least some of the time or possibly even investing in the five finger shoes. They're called Vibrams. They look super funny, but um, I have a pair. You might get a little, a couple funny looks from them, but um, they're definitely worth the investment. So by walking barefoot, you reestablish that um, natural biomechanics in your body so you can try to restore joint health that way. Um, the other way you can do it is through your diet. So collagen is an awesome supplement that you can take. So it's usually in a powdered form and I'd recommend getting a grass-fed version of that. So Bulletproof has a great um, version of that. There's also different companies out there, all kinds of different companies out there. You can probably find something on Amazon. I'll put a link below to a couple that I use that I have used in the past. So that's another thing you can use. In addition to that, your body needs vitamin C in order to synthesize and better assimilate the collagen that you take. So really, really good idea to take collagen alongside of vitamin C, right? And so that's going to be a natural antioxidant anyways. So you're going to get a lot of benefits as well. The other way you can uh, restore joint health is through this guy, Kelly Starrett, who writes, writes a great book. It's called um, Becoming a Supple Leopard. So it's a huge book, and you can check that out. It has a ton of mobility. Um, I know there's a lot of you know rolling with lacrosse balls or tennis balls, golf balls, all kinds of different stretches you can do and mobility work. Um, I'm definitely not an expert at that, but I've done um, a good amount of his exercises and his um, techniques, and they definitely work wonders. So if you're having some trouble with your joint health, I would definitely recommend that book. And I'll put a, a link to that below. And then another one is just walking more, um, getting exercise. And so when you're getting um, you know, movement in the body, so by walking, you're reestablishing better circulation, um, you're getting uh, better blood flow to your joints, uh, better oxygenation to your joints so they're able to heal. Now exercise is another one that, that actually helps. So when you strengthen the muscle tissue, uh, a lot of times you're going to have better luck with the joints, with the tendons. And so when you have a better stability, the joints don't have to do as much work because you have uh, more ability to withstand force um, into the muscle rather than into the joints. And then when you're doing exercise, I would highly recommend you know, either getting a trainer. Um, trainers are awesome at basically um, you know, getting the biomechanics of movements right so that you're not putting extra stress on the tendons and joints that's unnecessary. So when you're working with a trainer, um, they're you know, very knowledgeable. Um, I don't claim to know too, too much about that, but I've been working out for such a long time that I've got a good handle on it, um, thankfully. But if you're just starting out, getting to the gym, you know, sometimes you can do more damage than good if you don't know how to do the movements properly. So I definitely, you know, encourage you to start with light weights if you're unfamiliar with the movements and then really focus on getting the form down first before you load up the bar um, and so that, that way you can ensure that you have the proper angles and the proper force is going into your muscles rather than your joints and ligaments. And then by strengthening your muscles, that's going to really do uh, a number in a positive way for your joints and ligaments. Um, and the other thing, last but not least, is diet and gut health. So a lot of times, you know, people when they're inflamed chronically, they'll feel that in their joints and ligaments, unfortunately. And so eliminating a lot of the trigger foods, you know, 
I've talked about this multiple times, gluten, dairy, sugar, um, soy can cause some problems just because of the genetic modification that's in a lot of soy now. And so by eliminating a lot of those foods, you're going to be decreasing your inflammation, thus improving the health of your joints, right? So a lot of times the joints are the weakest link and they kind of get hit with inflammation, you know, chronic inflammation. And so by removing some of those food groups that are likely culprits of that, you're going to have a better um, you know, joint health overall. And then by calming down systemic inflammation, by healing your gut, you know, I've talked about bone broth before, um, using stuff like glutamine um, in a lot of different scenarios is a good idea for gut health. And there's a whole, you know, there's a whole plethora of stuff that I could, I could get into with gut health. But for the purpose of this video, trying to decrease systemic inflammation is going to be a really good idea for reducing um, joint pain and then increasing joint health. So I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, I covered a couple of the different things. There's a ton of other stuff I could have gotten into, but hopefully that was helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please comment below. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, so thanks again for watching. I really appreciate your time.